And I want to start with uh, Delfino. We have, California has seven emergency shelters for foster youth. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, okay. they have, there's seven. There used to be more shelters. Um, back when I was a social worker, I think there was at one time uh, about 20 shelters. And then over time, because of changes in the licensing rules, licensing rules by the state of California, they've kind of uh, moved away from that, attritioned away from that. And uh, this, uh, this current situation that we're on uh, it was a culmination of a lot of factors, including the move by, or the, the preference of the state to move away from congregate care uh, to uh, a single child system, which has been very difficult for the state and the counties to, uh, to get up to speed. Uh, Lisa could talk a little bit about the challenges we're having with that, but it's been a long time coming. But I would say over the last five years, it's gotten uh, particularly bad with the inaction of the uh, continuum care reform, which changed the, the total um, requirements for all the caregivers and all the licensing that we have. And we basically had to reestablish all their, all their credentials. Let me go to uh, Lisa. Uh, Lisa, what is your experience? Uh, first of all, tell us uh, a little bit about what your organization does, how many kids you've placed, and then what experiences you've had uh, with the Fresno County. Well, I've, I've, uh, I'm the founder and director of Angels of Grace Foster Family Agency, and we were established in 2000. My heart was really, uh, has always been to serve women. And for some reason, I kept being moved into the area of foster care. And so when I was receiving my master's in social work, I did my internship in emergency response at Child Protective Services in Fresno County. And I saw the huge disparity of uh, items not being available for children and just the challenges that we were in in our community because of the high rate of, of um, need that we had here in our valley. And so as, as I went on and received my master's, I, I made it a mission. Uh, my calling and my passion, I felt like God had called me to do this work so that we could be available to meet the needs of the children that were coming into the foster care system. Remembering that the, the, the main goal of foster care is reunification, that our children would be placed in homes uh, back with relatives and that we would establish the ability to work with these families so that the children could go back into a healthy environment. And so in that, in that crisis mode, we go out and we respond to these children 24 seven and they're coming in at two, three in the morning and a lot of them are not coming in with items or they're, they're having special needs. And as an agency under the, the, the jurisdiction of community care licensing, which is the state of California, we have jurisdictions, we have mandates that we have to follow in order to be in compliance. And so that's kind of where the needs are and, the, and we need to really be able to meet the needs to be able to place children and be able to, to place them even in crisis mode and, and, and place them in homes where they're gonna be able to have the higher needs met. As Delfino had said, has mentioned, we had at one time, we had the Craycroft Center, which is a, was a wonderful uh, shelter that we had here in our community. Unfortunately, that shelter is no longer available to us. And so because we run ourselves into that crisis mode where kids are being rescued at two in the morning and we have a child that maybe has out of control behaviors that has medical fragile needs, it's very challenging to place those children into homes where they're gonna have those needs met. And because we are under those jurisdictions to make you know, mindful matches, a lot of these children are hard to place children. We have many, many uh, obstacles that come before us. And this is really a call for the community, people that want to make a difference, that have those abilities to become foster parents. It might be psychologists, it might be nurses, doctors, to open up their homes and being able to be an, a, an answer to this crisis that we're having in our community. So really it takes a community. A lot of the kids that we get are only with us for three days. And in those moments that they come in because of uh, organizations and people with, with their hearts to give like you, Darius, through Granville, who's been very generous to many of the community agencies here, including Angels of Grace. We have those diapers, we have the formula, we have the, the car seats that we're gonna need to give grandma when she comes to pick up five grandchildren because she now is gonna have to have them in her care because that's the plan that the county has made that would be in the best interest of these children. So it really is a crisis, but it's a crisis that if we come together as a community, and answer the call and really work and try to establish uh, qualified families.